So till now we have talked about harmony and relationship. And we said harmony and relationship is centered around relationship. Harmony in, in family is centered around relationship. And when we talk about relationship, what is of importance is the feeling. And then we said that these are definite feeling in one self or the other self. And we can understand these feelings and we can you know, ensure this feeling in ourselves. And when we express this feeling with others, right, then with right evaluation, it leads to my happiness as well as the happiness of the other. So this yellow part of this diagram that you see, you know, is what we are talking about, understanding relationship, accepting relationship, then understanding the feelings in the relationship and ensuring this feeling in ourselves. This ensures happiness in me. And then sharing this feeling with others. The recognition and evaluation of this feeling by the other as well leads to happiness in the other. And ultimately it leads to mutual happiness. So this is what we are talking about. And we said that these feelings are definite and we can recognize them and we can understand them, you know, and we can ensure them within ourselves and share it with others. So we were trying to unfold these feelings, you know, one by one. So we have talked about trust and then we have talked about respect. And these two are very important feelings. In fact, most of the time we have complained about these two. So in most of the complaints in the relationship are related to this, that the other person is not trusting me or the other person is not respecting me. <coughs> so once these feelings are, you know, understood and ensured within, then we can see, you know, the other feelings can be a very natural outcome of this. So let's go by, you know, look into them one by one. So this affection, affection is the feeling of being related to the other. That is acceptance of the other as one's relative. The other is like me. So once I have this feeling of trust and feeling of respect for each other, I am able to see that the other person is related to me. He is my relative. If I am able to see this and accept this, this is what we are calling as feeling of affection. So if we have trust and respect, affection will follow. On the other hand, if we have this absence of affection, we will have this feeling of opposition, feeling of jealousy. Right. So if we dis mistrust or if we have disrespect, right, it will ultimately lead to this feeling of opposition, feeling of jealousy. So this is the important feeling, you know, whether I'm able to accept the other as my relative or as my opposition. Do I have this feeling of being related to the other? Once I have this feeling of being related to the other, it will express itself in terms of the sense of responsibility. Sense of responsibility. Can we go back? Yeah. So one has the responsibility and commitment for mutual fulfillment in relationship. So with feeling of care goes the commitment for the fulfillment of relationship. So if I feel related to the other, if I think that the other is my relative, then with this feeling of affection comes this commitment, commitment for the fulfillment, responsibility for the fulfillment of relationship. On the other hand, if we do not have this feeling and we have this feeling of opposition and jealousy, then 
instead of responsibility, there will be this reaction. Right? Instead of commitment in relationship, you will be willing to exploit others. Right? Dominate others. <coughs> so this is the feeling of affection. And once in, we have this feeling of affection, and we have this commitment for fulfillment relationship, we will have this feeling of care and feeling of guidance. Right? Feeling of care and feeling of guidance. This feeling of care is feeling of responsibility towards the self of my relative, right? towards the uh, body of my relative. They just interchange, you know, Rajuji. On the left side, it is the feeling of, you know, responsibility towards the self. It should be on the right side. So this self and body has to be interchanged. I mean, the whole. Or you can interchange the uh, I'll title. I'll do that. I'll just do that. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, it's okay. So, when we say care, we mean feeling of responsibility towards the body of my relative. And with this goes this responsibility and commitment for nurturing and protection of the body of my relative. So, if you look at this child, for example, you know, this child, you know, is not able to take care of its body. So the mother who has this feeling of care for the child, right, she is having this feeling of responsibility towards the body of the child. So she is taking care of the child in terms of nurturing the body and protecting the body of the child. So this is the feeling of care. But when we understand that human being is not just the body, but coexistence of self and body. Then we would like to take care of the body <coughs> as well as take care of the self. So this feeling of responsibility towards the self of my relative is what we are calling as guidance. Right? So we have this responsibility and commitment for ensuring right understanding and right feeling in the self of my relative. So with this feeling of guidance, I will take care of the child, right, in terms of developing right understanding in the ch child, in terms of developing right feelings in relationship in the child. So I'm not only taking care of the body, but I'm also taking care of the self. Right? So if I have this feeling of affection, it will show itself in the form of feeling of care and guidance. Right? So feeling of care has to do with responsibility towards the body of my relative and guidance has to do with the responsibility towards the self. Okay. So with this feeling of care, I will take care of the nurturing and protection of the body of the child, for example. With this feeling of guidance, I'll take the responsibility of ensuring right understanding and right feeling in the child, right? the self of the child. So this affection will express itself in terms of this care and guidance, right? So care and guidance are natural outcome of this feeling of affection. Yes. And of course, these questions are there, which you can look into yourself, that today, Right. What are we doing? Do we ensure both care as well as guidance or are we mostly focused on care? So in the regular session, we take many examples to show that today, right, while taking care of the body, like feeding the child, right, we are, are we concerned about both the body as well as the self or we are feeding the body at the cost of the self, many times forcing the child to eat, to drink milk, which is certainly making the child unhappy you know, and creating a feeling of opposition. So those details I'm not going into, but uh, this is important to ask yourself whether we are taking care of both the body and the self. Do we have this feeling of care as well as the guidance or we are mostly focusing on feeling of care? Yes. 
now with this we can talk about some other feelings so we have already talked about trust respect affection care and guidance now let's look at this feeling of reverence so this feeling of reverence is the feeling of acceptance for excellence so if i see excellence in someone i have a natural acceptance for that excellence and for the person who has this excellence that feeling is called the feeling of reverence and what is excellence if you try to look at that then it is basically what we said you know we as human being wants to ensure continuity of happiness and that happiness can be ensured by way of understanding the harmony at all levels and living in harmony at all levels or having this feeling and thought of harmony at all levels so when we have this completion of right understanding right feeling in us then this is what excellence is so when we have this right understanding in ourselves the right feeling and right thought in ourselves in line with harmony at all levels starting from self to the entire existence then we have the excellence because this is what we ultimately want so when somebody has this excellence we have an acceptance for that person and that is what is the feeling of reverence what i was just mentioning in the beginning of this session in response to one of the question was that we have to understand excellence right and we have to work for excellence right today what is happening is these two are confused working for excellence and competition or competing with each other is considered to be the same thing they are not the same thing they are very different things right that we can understand in detail we do understand in the main session but we will not get into the detail we we'll just display what it is but not get into the detail but one thing is important to see that in excellence one helps to bring the other to his level so when i have understood the harmony and i am living in harmony i would certainly like everyone to understand the harmony and live in harmony so i like to bring everyone to my level on the other hand in competition right one hinders the other from reaching to his level because the other person reaches to your level you are lost so this excellence is you know what can be defined and if one has this excellence i have the acceptance for it i would like to become like him you know so this feeling of acceptance for excellence is what we are calling as reverence yes <clears throat> so excellence has to do with this understanding the harmony and living in harmony at all levels so this completeness of right understanding and right living is what is excellence yes now if you can see this excellence then you can also see the difference between the excellence and the competition and we have just displayed these things i am not going to go into the details in excellence you understand that the other is like me right not that i am special right it is not the other only me i am the special that is how you think when you are competing in excellence you are complementary right in competition you are all the time trying to assert that i am different or more than the other like that so feelings are based on right understanding they are definite unchanging 
In case of competition, feeling are based on preconditioning. Indefinite keep changing. In excellence, there is unconditional relationship. In competition, there is conditional relationship. Right. In excellence, we nurture others. Right. In competition, we may nurture or we may exploit the other. So all this, you can see, this excellence is something absolute. Competition is something relative. So these are some of the differences that we can see between excellence and competition. And when we see this difference, then you can understand that what we are saying is that we have to work for excellence. Each one of us has to work for excellence. And when we are achieving excellence, right, we are also willing to help others to achieve excellence. This is what is important. What we are doing, doing today is we are you know, working for competition. And in that competition, we do not want others to reach to our level. So in fact, many times we try to hinder the other. I mean, they, you must be having enough examples. So if your friend has not come to the class and then he wants your class notes, you try to avoid giving him class notes. So many such things you keep doing. And we think that this is the model which will work. There other models have been tried out in the tradition and they have worked. They are also being tried out right now and they are working. That is working with, you know, working for excellence rather than competition. So I remember, uh, you know, a college in Punjab called Lairarki College in Gurdaspur. It has 3000 plus girls, you know, studying there, class 6 to PhD. Right. And how many teachers you think would be there to run such a huge number you know, and such a range of class from class 6 to class to PhD. <laughs> So there are only four teachers. Okay. The remaining are all students as well as teachers. So whoever has understood, whether in the senior class or in the same class, right, he takes this as a responsibility to help others to understand. So you have a class of you know, 50 students and you have class of 25 students and like that and ultimately you have class of two students, right? One who has understood and one who has not understood. So this student of the same class who has understood is explaining to someone who has not understood you know, in that same class. So ultimately there is one teacher, one student, you know. And that is possible to do because this student in the same class, when he has understood something and is explaining to the other, he will understand things better. And he will help this other student to understand. So with four teachers, you can educate 3000 plus, you know, <coughs> students. Right? With this process of excellence, you know, working for excellence. So now, if you know, if when you look at these accreditation bodies, you know, their main idea is to, you know, help these institutions to work for excellence. So they have to define this yardstick for excellence, and they have to help these institutions to work for this excellence.
So nowadays we are trying to work out this. You know, uh, now that this new education policy has come, you know, lot of space has been created to talk about these things. And now we are trying to work out, you know, what will be the basis of evaluating an institution. What will be the basis of evaluating a graduate? What will be the graduate attributes? So there, all these issues will come. So these grad graduate attributes must include this, you know, achieving of excellence. So having right understanding, having right feeling in relationship, you know, having this competence to identify his need for physical facility and produce more than what it is required, right, in a manner which is cyclic and mutually enriching for the human being as well as for the rest of nature. So all that will become part of the graduate attributes. And an institution has to ensure, you know, facilitate the student to achieve that, those great, you know, graduate attributes to reach to that, you know, state of excellence. And for that, of course, the teacher, the staff, the administration, the management, you know, and everyone has to be geared up to this. Yes. So this is for excellence and, you know, reverence. Now, let me just uh, kind of complete this part. And now that we have defined excellence, we can define this feeling of glory and feeling of gratitude. So this feeling of glory is for those who have made effort for excellence. And gratitude is the feeling for those who have made effort for, you know, my excellence. Yeah, this is also flipped gradually. We can just change the title over. So glory is for feeling for those who have made effort for excellence and to whatever extent they have been able to achieve excellence. Right? Those who have made effort for excellence, we have this feeling of glory for them. And those who have worked for my excellence, right? For them, we have this feeling of gratitude. Right? We have this feeling of gratitude. So if you look around, we'll find that, you know, our being, <coughs> my being and my, be, you know, achieving excellence, in this process, so many people have been, you know, helpful and still they are helpful. So for them, I will have this feeling of gratitude. There are people who have worked for excellence right, to understand what is right and do what is right. right. Whether they have been able to complete that level of excellence or not, but they have worked for excellence. For them, we have this feeling of glory. glory. And when they have completed that excellence, we have this feeling of reverence. So this is about this feeling of reverence, which has to do with excellence, and then feeling of glory and gratitude, which also has to do with excellence. But it is a matter of degree. And, you know, when it comes to gratitude, it is, you know, ensuring excellence for myself. So this is how these three feelings are defined. So those who have achieved excellence and those who are working or making effort for excellence and those who have made effort for my excellence. This feeling of reverence, glory and gratitude is there. So if you put all of them together, you can see that trust and respect is for all. The reverence is for those who have achieved excellence. Glory is for those who have made effort for excellence. And gratitude is for those who made effort for my excellence. Right. <clears throat> and what is excellence? This excellence is that I am able to fulfill my basic human aspiration of continuous happiness by way of understanding the harmony and living in harmony. Right. 
at all levels. That is excellence. Yes. And with this background, now we can also talk about this feeling of love. Right? This feeling of love is being related to all. And that is the complete value. Right? When we feel related to all, every human being and every unit in nature, that is the feeling of love. And we can see that it all starts with identifying that one is related to the other human being, that is affection. And it slowly expands to the feeling of being related to all human beings and then to all each and every unit in nature, human being as well as other units. So this is the feeling of love. And when I feel related to everyone, this feeling of love is expressed in the form of kindness, beneficence and compassion. Right. So I have this feeling of love and compassion for everyone. Right. The feeling is for all, but it is expressed to those who come in contact. So whoever comes in contact, right, with them we express these feelings of love and compassion. But it is there in us for all human beings and all units in nature. So this love and compassion is something which is there in me <clears throat> based on my understanding of harmony with every unit in existence, every unit in nature. Right. So what we have been saying many times that ultimately the issue is that there is this relationship, harmony and coexistence which I can see. Right. When I see this and I accept this, I see that I am related, I am related to all. So that is the feeling of love. Right. And then I think in terms of how to fulfill that responsibility, that is my compassion. So I have understood this relationship, harmony and coexistence, that is the truth. With that, I have this feeling of love, which is being expressed as feeling of compassion. So truth, love and compassion is something which runs through all these you know, civilizations. <clears throat> so once we have this feeling of love, it will express itself in the form of an undivided society. Undivided society where I treat everyone as part of my family. So it leads to justice from family to world family. So if I sum up the whole thing now in the light of this relationship and the feelings in the relationship, you know, this is how it looks, you know, this harmony in family where we understand the relationship and we have the feelings in the relationship and we are able to ensure this fulfillment of feeling in the relationship leading to mutual happiness. Right? It is called justice. So justice is recognition, fulfillment and evaluation of human-human relationship leading to mutual happiness. And this justice we want to ensure from family to world family. We want to start it in family, but we do not want to stop it at the level of family. We want to go right up to the world family. Right? And that would lead to undivided society. Right? Today what we have is a Divided society or an undivided society? So we have divided society, society divided, divided into so many sects and <coughs> <coughs> groups and you know, so many things. <coughs> but what we all aspire for is this, you know, being related to all an undivided society. <coughs> so if we understand relationship, harmony and harmony, if we understand the harmony in family and we understand the relationship, and if we see that we want to extend this relationship to all, we can have this feeling of love and lay down the foundation for an undivided society. <coughs> so this is the essence of harmony in family, which leads to justice, mutual happiness. And 
ultimately it leads to harmony at the level of family and at the level of the world family which leads to a state of undivided society so this is what we have you know to talk about this harmony in family of course i have talked about it in very brief presuming that in the normal in the regular sessions all these details will be discussed